Okay, in this modeling example, I'm just going to freestyle a little bit and show how to model a blade of uh, of this example, like what you're seeing right in front of you. Now I've sketched out this design on a piece of paper and then I just took a picture of it and I used it as a basis to create this, uh, this blade here. However, I'm not really satisfied with the topology that this blade is going through. Although the subdivided version of this blade looks alright, uh, I think there are a number of ways that I can improve this. So I'm just going to hide this, uh, hide this blade in another layer and then I'm just going to start all over again to create uh, another blade that is based on this design. Now if you watch my earlier videos, you will know how to set this up and usually I set the reference to face the x-axis. Now I'm going to put this reference layer and then put it in reference mode so that I don't accidentally move it. And I'm going to use, in my previous method I used a cube and I extended the blade. But now in this uh, version of the blade, I'm going to, or this for this particular sword, I'm going to use the uh, draw or create polygon tool. So first I go to the right view and then I'm going to hold down to shift, right mouse click and then I'm going to use the create polygon tool. I'm going to start from the base of this blade and start to draw the outline. Now the earlier version of the blade, I used very little detail to represent the curve. So this time I'm going to experiment by using more points. Okay, normally I would advise against using uh, a lot of points right at the, from right at the beginning. But right now I just want to try to get the curve as much as I can. Now when you create all these vertices to create the shape of the curved blade, you must take note of the number of vertices that you are using to create on, on this line for example. Because once you reach to the other side, right, you have to make sure that you have the same number of vertices that is opposing the other side. Now the reason is very simple, I just want to make sure that when I extrude and when I use the cutting tool later on, I want to create four sided faces all along. So there is a vertex right directly opposite this edge here. So I'm going to make sure that I have another vertex that is directly opposite. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure there is one directly opposite. So in this case, I'm going to try one here and perhaps another one here another one and at every stage when I'm drawing the vertices I have to make sure that it has the same number of vertices along this side versus the other side so this is very important okay and this one I have to spread it a little bit further okay I seem to have lost track of the vertex so I just want to keep track and make sure that I have the same number of vertices that it is opposing each side. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, I just want to make sure. And then this one, so I'm going to put one more here, here. Finally, another one here. So once you're done, you just press enter. You, uh, you would have created, using the, this method, you would have created a super multi-sided polygon. Now, I have no idea how many sides uh, this polygon has, but what I'm going to show you next is you select this giant multi-sided face and then you do an inset extrude. Okay, so just hold down shift and right mouse click and then you just choose extrude face. And in Maya 2016, you should have this floating options that gives you an option called offset. Just click on offset and just offset the outline of the blade so that it goes inwards. Now, there are some parts, like for example, the tip of the extrusion that you might need to fix manually later on. And there are some areas here that you might need to fix. But by doing this, and if I switch over to perspective view, I can manually pull out the internally extruded face by myself. So by doing this, you would have created the sharp edge of this sword that goes all around. Now for my sword design, I deliberately made the back here blunt. The only cutting edge 
is shown by these two lines in my sketch here okay so right now I'm just going to switch back to the right view and I'm going to select the vertices and manually move these vertices so they so that they don't overlap each other okay and I can move these as close as I want and this one I can move it as further back as I want okay at this point in time I just want to move these vertices until they overlap each other because these are the blunt areas so I'm going to try to move them as close to each other on top as possible okay and right about here okay so my cutting edges are more or less done so right now I need to assign a semi-transparent material to this to, to this uh, newly created blade so that I can move my vertices until it matches the design that I want so right mouse click and then assign a new material and I select a new lampet material and then I'm going to give it a transparency well actually I've created a early on material but I wasn't aware that I have it in this uh, this new version so right now I can see through the design a little bit better and I'm going to move the vertices until it matches my design so I'm just moving the vertices until it matches the design of my uh, my sword design now this version versus the earlier version that I have definitely has uh, more detail and is able to follow because of the extra edges that I've created or rather the extra vertices that I've used I have much more detail that I've worked with now if you use too many or if you create too many uh, vertices okay you risk having to do this right now that means practically you have to move every single vertex into place in order to get the shape that you want okay and uh, so that's the disadvantage so if you start off with a lower number of vertices okay, you have less uh, pushing of vertices or moving of the vertices work to do Okay, however, I think this version compared to my earlier attempt will turn out to be much better because once I subdivide it later on, I'll, I should be able to get the shape that I want. Now, using this way of creating the blade, you are essentially only creating half a blade. And uh, by extruding that this giant face earlier on, I would have created another multi-sided face on the other side. So right now, this is a multi-sided face and we're going to do something later on to so that it I can convert it into four-sided faces so that later when we subdivide this it won't na we will not have all this uh, nasty uh, subdivision artifacts okay, I'm going to switch over to perspective view for a short while and I'm going to just highlight to you this the other multi-sided face on the other side so we need to get rid of this face just select it and delete it and so now we have half of this uh, this sword that we've created so for those of you who are modeling swords with intricate blade patterns you can use this create polygon uh, method to create your sword designs so now I'm going to use the multi-cut tool okay you can choose the multi-cut tool in the polygons category or you can hold down when you're in face mode hold down the shift right mouse click and then choose the or rather let's go back to select go back to face mode select one of the face hold down the shift and then you can choose multi cut so I'm going to do a multi cut now to cut so that all the faces will become four sided so every time you cut you press the enter key so click on the opposing edge and then press enter so that you end up with a four sided face okay so I'm just gonna continue to do this okay so this is very critical why I was literally counting the vertices to make sure that I have the same number of vertices on this side versus the other side 
because this is the result that I want. Okay, cut to here, press enter, cut from here to here, press enter, and so on. Okay, at this stage, I think I could have missed out a couple of spots, so I'm just going to manually cut right across here. Okay, and this one will go across this one. And finally, this point to this point, and only this area I missed out uh, cutting another or rather creating another vertex. So I press Q to switch back to vertex selection mode, and then just gradually move these vertices into place. Okay. So now I can experiment by, okay, let me just make this a little bit more solid. I can press number three to subdivide this and see what is the result. And I end up with uh, one vertex which I didn't cut properly. So I can see over here, I got a multi-sided face. So that means I didn't cut this point properly. So I'm going to select these two vertices and then I'm going to merge them together much vertices, much the vertices. So now I'm going to press 3 again to subdivide. Okay, so now everything is subdividing nicely. Okay, so now if I want the points here to be harder, I will have to insert edge loops. So right now I go to edge and insert edge loop. Just insert a couple of edge loops between this to make sure that these, these uh, sharp points are really sharp. Okay, and then right here and here. Okay, and then finally the back here to really tighten things up. And if I choose to, and uh, because of the way that I cut my uh, create my polygon I can also cut a another edge just to sharpen the tip up a little bit okay so I'm gonna press Q to go back to select and then I'll inspect the blade okay right now the points which I want to be sharp is looking sharp however I don't have the central blade uh, detail here so I have to insert an edge loop that runs across here so pressing one by going to the base level I'm just going to switch back to my edge and then uh, holding down the shift right mouse click and then insert edge loop 2 I'm going to insert one edge loop 2 edge loop here another edge loop here and if I run my blade to be really sharp I just want to insert one edge loop that runs all across right to the edge here so now if I press number 3 to subdivide and go back to object mode I can see the blade detail really really clearly okay I might need another extra edge loop okay right behind here so I'm gonna insert the edge loop right behind this edge here and another one right here so now if I press number three go to object mode and now I can see the blade detail or the edges coming out much much nicer now to complete my blade I need to create the other half so that there are two pieces that are joined together so I'm gonna select this blade and then because if I go to my front view and if I if I press W the center is right right at the half of this blade here so I can apply the mesh mirror geometry straight away and because I'm mirroring in the x-axis I'm gonna try to mirror in the negative x-axis I want to merge it with the original and merge the vertices and mirror so right now I have a complete blade okay and both of the center is joined together now to verify that 
these are actually joined together I'm going to select what by clicking one of the vertices and then try to move it around see whether it splits no it does not it does, does not split and according to my HUD there's only one vertex that's selected so right now I'm pretty certain that this is a single piece right now okay so that is how you use the draw polygon tool or rather the create polygon tool to create a intricate looking blade so after this video I will show you how to uh, UV layout this blade